What are the goals of the genetically modified food industry? The main reason they genetically engineer crops is to sell more chemicals. The Roundup Ready sells more Roundup. The Liberty Link sells more Liberty. Those are herbicides. And 85% of the GMOs in the world are herbicide tolerant, mostly Roundup Ready. There's also the second most common category are, so are not soy, soy in South America plus cotton and uh, uh, corn also in North America that produce their own insecticide. So you actually eat the corn on the cob and you're eating an insecticide and oftentimes it's in B, that's called BT. Oftentimes it's not only BT corn but it's Roundup Ready corn. So you're eating Roundup residues plus an insecticide plus the GMOs and I wouldn't do it if I were you. <laughs> so they claim that the reason is to feed the world, but if they were actually motivated by feeding the world, they'd never make those type of GMOs. In fact, the GMOs that they make don't increase average yield. Sometimes they lower yield, and they claim that it's supposed to increase yield, but it, it's varied. And agroecological practices can increase, can double yield in developing countries, even triple yield, especially even the staples. And so you have a situation where if you really wanted to feed the world, you'd have nothing to do with GMOs. And that was the conclusion made by the ISTAD report, which was produced in 2008 with over 400 scientists commissioned by the UN and the World Bank. It's the most comprehensive evaluation of how to feed the world. And their conclusion was GMOs have nothing to offer. Are there any studies or research showing the health dangers from GMOs? Hmm. Yes. I collect them. I trade them with my friends. It's like baseball cards for me. Yeah, there's a lot. They show potentially precancerous cell growth in the digestive tract, smaller brains, livers, and testicles, uh, partial atrophy of liver, damaged immune system. That was one study in 1990, um, 1990s. Then there was things that show higher uh, mortality, problems with the liver, problems with the kidneys, problems with the organ enzymes, altered biochemistry, damaged junk sperm cells, damaged reproductive organs. Um, we see problems if, of reproduction. Uh, birth defects, uh, it goes on and on. And some of them repeat the same thing, immune system problems, digestive problems, reprodu reproductive problems, accelerated aging. Uh, and these, some of these were cited by the American Academy of Environmental Medicine in their paper that said all doctors should prescribe non-GMO diets to all patients. And when they started to, they reported to me that their patients were getting better. Now there's thousands of doctors prescribing organic diets and reporting dramatic improvements. Some of them are in the film, Secret Ingredients. You said the most in-depth research study to date on GMO health showed massive damage. Tell us about the study and what did the biotech industry do to get people not to believe the study? Well, there's two in-depth studies that I've talked about. One was from Dr. Arpad Pustai from the 1990, 1998. He went on TV answering some questions and saying that he didn't think that the public should be used as guinea pigs for an uh, experiment on GMOs and that he wouldn't put them in his mouth. Why? Because he had done the most sophisticated studies on GMOs and found out that the process itself, irrespective of what gene you put in, the mere process of genetic engineering caused all these problems, potentially precancerous cell growth in the digestive tract, smaller brains, livers, and testicles, partial atrophy of the liver, damaged immune system in 10 days. Now, he was fired from his job after 35 years and silenced with threats of a lawsuit. We understand that it was Monsanto that called, called the Clinton White House, Clinton called Tony Blair, the uh, Prime Minister's office called um, Professor Philip James, who was uh, Dr. Arpad Pustai's boss, and the next day Pustai was fired. And they put out a massive disinformation campaign to try and destroy his reputation in order to protect the reputation of biotechnology. Eventually he was invited to speak before Parliament, the gag order was lifted, he got his data back, it's published in The Lancet and other places, and it shows that the process of genetic engineering is unsafe. But by the time that came out, there was such confusion and such misreporting that it didn't have its day in court, so to speak. Similarly, Dr. Uh, G.E. Seralini, Professor Seralini, did a two-year study on rats. He showed that Roundup Ready corn and Roundup, individually or together, caused multiple massive tumors, early death, and organ damage. It was the most comprehensive study, the longest study. It could have and should have stopped the use of GMOs around the world. 
Instead, this massive disinformation campaign used its own campaign as an echo chamber, claiming it was consensus and it was just their own paid people and pseudoscientists and front groups saying the same talking points that were distributed by Monsanto's PR firm. And that ended up causing doubt among both the regulators around the world and those that were reporting on it. And so they, Dr. Seralini was eventually awarded um, an award for being a whistleblower. His stuff was published and vindicated, but it did not have the impact that it should have had, again, because of the massive attack campaign that is regularly unleashed on any scientist who dares to discover problems. You said that over 90% of the soy, corn, cotton, canola, and sugar beet crops in the U.S. are GMO. Why is such a high percentage of these crops GMO, and why is that a problem? It's interesting that Monsanto, before they were purchased by Bayer, went on a shopping spree themselves and bought up all these seed companies and created motivation for the seed, the seed dealers to sell the GMO version. They sometimes eliminated the best performing non-GMO version, so you could only buy the GMO version. Um, there was all sorts of economic incentives and elimination of alternatives uh, to push these out. And all of the crops that you mentioned are Roundup Ready, which makes it easier to weed. So if you have a large farm, you could weed without the farmers by just running a tractor or flying a plane and spraying right over the top. So you don't have to spot apply. You can just broad scale sp uh, spread your poison all around. It gets absorbed into the food. We eat it if we eat the GMOs. Um, so it's easier to weed. It makes farming easier, less time consuming, less labor costs. And in some cases, you have trouble trouble getting non-GMO seed that does well in your area. Right now you can't get a non-GMO sugar beet seed. You can't get sugar beets. They're all GMO, 100%. In some areas, I talk to farmers in their area, they can't get high-performing non-GMO seed. It's been taken over. 